this video is going to talk about angles and radians. So let's kind of go through and make sure that we remember things about radian measurements. First of all, remember we have one, two, three, four quadrants in a coordinate plane. And if we looked at moving in the positive direction and going one trip all the way around, we know that those measurements correspond in radians. Remember, in degrees, it would be the positive y is 90 degrees, then 180, 270, 360. But in radians, we're talking that this would be pi over 2 radians. This is going to be pi radians. This would be 3 pi over 2 radians. And all the way back, or one trip all the way around, will be 2 pi radians. Okay? But what if we're moving in the negative direction? Well, we can still do that. We're going to travel down and around, go clockwise. Okay, we have our initial side, remember. Starts off here at the positive. But then this would be a negative pi over 2 that we've traveled. A negative pi that we've traveled. A negative 3 pi over 2. And a negative 2 pi. All right, so this can get pretty confusing at times. You just got to be patient and kind of walk your way through the problem. There's not an easy way to like jump to an answer. So let's start off by sketching an angle, okay? So the first one that we're going to do is try to sketch negative 19 pi over 6. Here's what I know. I know I'm traveling downward. I know I'm traveling in a negative direction and clockwise, all right? I'm going to start with my identifying my initial side as the positive x-axis. I know that if I travel one trip all the way around here, I have traveled negative 2 pi. So I'm going to take this negative 19 pi over 6 and add to that 12 pi over 6 which would represent one revolution or one rotation. All right. When I do that, I'm left with negative 7 pi over 6. So I know I've got more to go. All right. I know that 7 pi over 6 is a little bit more than 1. So I'm going to go another pi here on my rotations. So now I am going to see where we're at. I've got negative 7 pi over 6. But now I'm going to add 6 pi over 6. And we still have negative 1 pi over 6 left to graph. So I'm just going to bring that a little bit above. And then go ahead and draw the terminal side of the angle. Okay. And that's what the graph of negative 19 pi over 6 looks like. Keep this in mind too. I could always, if I start getting really confused with radians, I can always change the radians into degrees. And remember, to go from radians to degrees, you're going to multiply by 180 over pi. All right? So if that helps, you can always fall back on that. Now, let's try this second one here. All right? I'm going to start off by showing my initial side. I know that this is going to travel in a positive direction, and I already went this one loop because I know that 34 pi over 9 is more than 2 pi. So I'm going to take 34 pi over 9, and I'm going to subtract that loop off of it, which would be 18 pi over 9, and that puts me at uh, 16 pi over 9. Okay. I know that 16 pi over 9 would not be another entire rotation. But let's do it this way. I know that it's at least going to take me over to here. So I'm going to take that 16 pi over 9 and subtract pi from it, which would be 9 pi over 9. And that tells me that I'm left with 7 pi over 9 still remaining. Now 7 pi over 9 is greater than 1 half. So I know I'm going to go beyond this negative y-axis, all right? But I'm just going to worry about getting to it right now. So right now, I'm going to take 7 pi over 9 and subtract from it pi over 2. Now, this would give me 14 pi 
minus 9 pi over 18. Okay, let me just double check, make sure I'm doing my arithmetic correctly. All right, and that would give me 5 pi over 18 left. Now, 5 pi over 18 is going to put me probably right about there. And that's going to indicate to me there's my terminal side. Okay? Now, let's look at the second idea for today. What if they give me a picture and they say, we want you to find the angle in radians? All right? Well, to find this angle in radians, let's see. I know that I'm going positively. I know that the first axis here indicates pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and then I got to go a little bit beyond that. So I'm going to take 3 pi over 2 and add to that 2 pi over 9. Now I can find common denominators, whatever I need to do. I'm going to go ahead and do the smiling x here and get 27 pi plus 4 pi over 18. Remember that 3 pi times 9 plus 2 times 2 pi over 2 times 9. That's how I got that. This would simplify to be 31 pi over 18. I can't simplify that fraction. That would be the measurement of that angle in radians. What if I move negatively? Okay, so if I move negatively, I know this is negative pi over 2. This is negative pi. This is negative 3 pi over 2. So I'm going to start with negative 3 pi over 2. And then it says to go pi over 6 further. Now remember, because we're traveling in a negative direction, I would subtract pi over 6 from that. All right? So if, if I do this, sometimes, especially when I'm dealing with negatives, I tend to always like to read, write things with common denominators. So I'm going to rewrite this. Let's see, negative 3 pi over 2. I'm going to write them both so they have a common denominator of 6. So that's going to make this negative 9 pi, and this would be minus 1 pi. So this would be negative 10 pi over 6, and I can simplify that to negative 5 pi over 3. And that's the measurement of that angle in radians. So we got a lot of work to do with fractions here. All right. The final thing that we're going to do is talk about how do we find that reference angle. Now, finding a reference angle, guys, I always find it easier to find reference angles when you are dealing with positive reference angles. That's what this means right here. All right. What's the reference angle when theta is greater than zero? or positive. So here's what I know. In quadrant one, the reference angle is theta. How do I know that? Because they tell me that the reference angle has to be between zero and pi over two radians. Okay. But what if it's in quadrant two? If it's in quadrant two, we originally said with degrees to take 180 minus theta. What this is telling me is to take pi minus theta. If it's in quadrant 3, we were told to take theta minus 180. So now we're going to take theta minus pi. And then if it's in the fourth quadrant, we are going to, uh, originally with angles, it said take 360 minus theta. I'm going to go ahead and change that and make that 2 pi minus theta. Okay? All right. Oh, boy. Let's take a look at this first one. All right. So this first one, first thing that I'm going to do, I, I don't want to deal, it's going around the circle too many times. So I'm going to start off by simplifying it and take 23 pi over 6, and I'm going to subtract 2 pi or 12 pi over 6. Just get rid of that so I know that I'm dealing with 11 pi over 6. Okay? Now remember, the reference angle is this angle right in here. Okay? That's our reference angle. Let me see if I can do that in a different flavor here. It's how it relates to its position uh, versus the x-axis. All right. So I know that if I have 11 pi over 6, 
I'm dealing with an angle that is in the third, or sorry, the fourth quadrant. So what I want to do to find its reference angle is I'm going to take 2 pi minus 11 pi over 6. Now I could rewrite this with common denominators as 12 pi over 6 minus 11 pi over 6. And that tells me that the reference angle is 1 pi over 6. This is the reference angle for 23 pi over 6. Okay? What about one that's traveling in a negative direction? Now I'm going to show you guys a little trick that I like to use. You can always look this up on the internet and see if there's maybe a different way or a better way to do it. All right, so here's what I'd like to do. I know that if I go and I measure this angle in this direction. Well, let's see. I know one trip all the way around here would be negative 36 pi over 18. All right, but I want to reference it back. I know that it's got to be less than uh, pi o sorry, it's got to be less than nine, 18 pi over 18, right? Okay, um, I'm drawing a blank here, guys. Give me just a second. Um, let's see. Uh, sorry, I'm drawing a blank on this one, okay, on what I was intending to say. But uh, let, let me let me try to kind of look at it from a little bit different perspective, okay? I know that this is really going to be, um, it's going to be a, uh, moving in a negative direction. So that's going to be, if I take... I, I, I want to think of this as being in the third quadrant, so I'm going to take 23 pi over 18, and I want to subtract 18 pi over 18. From I know that this is what I want to do. I apologize, guys, for drawing that blank right there, but there's going to be my reference angle. And if you notice, that reference angle is between. Now, let me try to explain myself. I thought of this kind of moving in the negative direction. So I think of it like this. Even though those aren't the correct quadrants, they are if you think about the movement in the negative direction. And then I use my rule that says take theta, which was 23 pi over 18. That negative was just giving me direction. And subtract from that pi. All right. So again, this was using theta minus pi. And that's how I get a reference angle of 5 pi over 18. I hope this helps. You might want to do some research on how to do reference angles. Uh, there's probably a, a way online that explain it better. Good luck.